All right, what's going on, everybody? May the Lord bless you on this beautiful, beautiful blessed day as we give the Lord all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. Now, my title says the difference between Sarah and Hagar. My brothers and sisters, what I want to do in this video is um, speak about Galatians chapter 4, verses 21 through 31. But for time's sake, uh, I'm not going to go through all the scriptures. If you have time on your own, you know, check it out. But what I want to do is just kind of paraphrase through this. Um, because when you start looking at Sarah and Hagar, and then you look at why did Paul tie this in in Galatians chapter 4 because just like back then and nowadays people um, get so confused about the law teachings of the law and Paul was worried about the Christians in Galatians because of you know it was false teachers around we already know that just like nowadays and you got a lot of people teaching so many things and Paul didn't want them to get caught up in that teaching. He wanted them to know the truth. And by Paul knowing the law so well, Paul knew all about the law because Paul was a very well-educated man. So he loved those Christians and he cared for them. And he wanted to show them what was right. So he used Sarah and Hagar as a great example. Once again, I'm talking about verses 21 through 31 in, in um, Galatians chapter 4. And Paul was saying, some of y'all still want the Jewish law to control you, but do you really understand the law? And he made that statement because a lot of people, even to this day, they think the law saves them. They think they can really keep the law all the way and that the law guarantees them salvation. And Paul was showing them something different. Then you got a lot of people talking about, well, Paul was going against what Jesus taught. You got so much stuff being taught now and confusion that is just when you tell the truth it's, it's hardly going to be anybody really recognize it because of all the false teaching and Paul what we have to understand about Paul is that Paul when he wrote his letters y'all he was also writing his letters to rebuke people and correct them out of love and he had a whole lot of people didn't like what he was teaching just like me and just like anybody that teach when you teach the truth and you hit on people's subject, subject that they don't want to hear about they tend to get mad at you and they, they really don't want to hear you no more because when you look at all those books in the New Testament 13 to 14 of those books we could say that's Paul addressing the church and when you address the church a lot of people say he was condemning. No, he wasn't condemning. He was rebuking. He was correcting out of love. I wish so many people would look at that like that and stop, you know, talking about he was condemning and putting people in the hell. No, he was not. It's a difference between correcting somebody and judging somebody. When you rebuke somebody out of love with scripture and teach them and show them the way and not condemning them, that's rebuking. A lot of religious people don't understand it. That's why they're always telling you you're going to hell instead of praying for you and trying to teach you something. So Paul didn't want them to be confused. So he was explaining to them the law and he was using Sarah and Hagar. Why would he do that? Well, go back to God's promise. We know that Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. But one was by the slave woman and that was Hagar, which Abraham had sex with Hagar, and they had um, Ishmael, you know, to just break this down in the smallest term. And Ishmael was not the promised child. See, God had already promised Abraham and Sarah, but they wanted to, they wanted to help God out and get ahead of God, like what God say wasn't going to come true. They messed up. So Sarah told Abraham, sleep with the slave woman, and there come Ishmael which caused a lot of it caused a lot of trouble in so many ways didn't it that go to show you when anytime we try to help God out like God don't know what he's doing and we don't want to wait then we we make so much trouble for our lives y'all a lot of trouble so once again Isaac was the promised child and the thing about it when you are a slave like Hagar when Hagar had her children then that means her children was born as slaves Hagar is like uh, Mount Sinai, and we all know about Ma Mount Sinai, which is in the region called what? Arabia. 
See, Paul, once again, being so educated and knowing the law, you know, he knew that slaves had no rights. And Sarah pretty much considered that Hagar was her property. We can tell by the scriptures. We did a video about that about probably about two years ago. And sometimes, back then, a man would marry a second wife. The society, it allowed those actions because the law wasn't given at that time. So we, we understand that the law wasn't given at that time. So now we know that God nowadays wants us to have one wife. Especially when you read and study the New Testament. A man should stay with his wife even if she cannot have children. But nowadays we see that people get divorced for all kind of reasons, you know. See, we know that the story once again told us that God promised Abraham that Sarah would have a son. But like I say, they wanted to get ahead of God because look at the age. What was Sarah around by 90 when they had um, start when she became pregnant? And you know, that's why Isaac's name means laughter because Sarah kind of laughed at the fact, oh, I'm going to get pregnant. Yeah, right. You know, and then look what happened. She turned around and got pregnant. So Paul is doing some serious explaining, you know, the difference between the law and freedom. And a lot of people right now still don't understand the difference between the law versus grace and mercy. You know, like I say, nothing was wrong with the law. There was something wrong with us. God put that stuff in play, you know, for the chosen ones. So I say, you can't put somebody up under something that it didn't apply to. That's why Paul wasn't going around beating folks over the head with the law, trying to force the law on people. He was showing them, hey, you are free. Just like nowadays, if, if we are in Christ, we got something to look forward to. He freed us from that. He fulfilled the law. Should you still try your best to live by the law? Yes, as much as you can. But the Lord already know you can't keep it and I can't keep it either. Because if you break the smallness, you done pretty much broke all of it. You're eating too much. You're sinning in your mind. You're having thoughts, lustful thoughts. Ain't none of us that good to keep the law like that. If we was perfect all the way like that, then we would be just like Christ all the way. And we are not. We have to repent from things. We got to get it right. We fall just like the men and women in the Bible did. So Paul was showing them, you are free. Freedom. Let me talk to y'all about the difference between freedom, you know, and, and, and the law. This is what Paul was getting at with them. He compared it to Hagar and Sarah. He used the principle rather than all the details. See, Ishmael's, you look at his children, Ishmael's sons and their families, they lived in Arabia. That's why I say Mount Sinai is in Arabia, and we know about Mount Sinai because Mount Sinai, um, that's where Moses was at. Y'all remember the story. That's where Moses had to climb up to receive the commandments from the Lord. So by Hagar once again being a slave, when a slave has children, their children become slaves too. That's why when you look at the Jews, then Jerusalem, Jerusalem was the capital city of the Jewish nation. Jerusalem was refer refers to all the Jews. They was pretty much slaves because of the law the Jewish law. They wanted God to approve of them because they was always trying to please God by their own effort. Well, the Bible shows you once again, all that you think you're doing is still your works. According to that, you think you can, the law save you, it don't. And, and when you think about when the Jews kept going against the Lord, they, they was always winding up in, in captivity for, for a reason because of what they was doing. God put them in slavery. They, they thought uh, they can make their own God sometimes. They kept reject going against God. But it's amazing that God still said that they are my chosen. I still love them. They are still my chosen. No matter how they turn on God, they, they put they look at look at uh when they was in in the wilderness. So when you think about that, and then you look at Isaac, 
who was the promised child, Isaac was a free person. Ishmael wasn't. Isaac was free because his mother was free. Now once again, bag back up, Hagar was the slave woman. So Sarah was like, I pretty much own you. So Hagar wasn't free. Sarah was, if that makes sense. So when you look at this and, and sum it all up, and look at the promised child, what do you see? So in a similar way, we as Christians, children of the Lord, who belong to God's family, we are free. Once again, that's why the law don't save you. So many people are always pushing the law on people. And when you just stay stuck on the law, you have pretty much missed the true meaning of salvation. If you understand that the law don't save you, then you feel me why I say that. Because see, Isaac, once again, Isaac was born because of God's promise. Isaac was not born because of Abraham's effort. And, and, well, I'm going to go ahead. No, nah, it was because of he was the promised child. Abraham was disobedient to me. When he listened at his wife, a lot of times in the Bible, when they listened at their wives, they got in trouble. Abraham, if he would have just been obedient and didn't listen at Sarah, they would have they never had Ishmael. And then they would have never had all that trouble. Isaac was born because he was God's promise. The Christians in Galatians were just like Isaac. They was free. They belong to God's family, but a lot of them didn't understand that. They kept talking about the law, that we slaves. Paul was saying, you are not slaves, you are free. Ishmael did not deal with Isaac in the right way, y'all. Y'all catch the story. He caused so much trouble for Isaac. Why is it in the Bible oftentimes brothers always getting into it? Then you look at Jacob and Esau. Ishmael caused a whole lot of trouble for Isaac, y'all. Ishmael, the slave. I don't think he really liked being a slave, y'all. But Isaac, being the free son, Ishmael didn't like that. So then you start looking at these false teachers back then. The false teachers caused a lot of trouble for who? Paul. Just like in my day's time. I get into it with a lot of false teachers because I want to teach the truth. I teach the truth, and the false teacher can't stand the truth. Why? Because you're messing up their doctrine. Then you're messing up their money. They want to keep you confused. They want you to, you know, follow their way. They cause Paul a lot of trouble. They cause trouble in the church. People who do not trust Jesus cannot receive God's blessings. And when you think about the blessings that the Lord have told us that we're going to receive, especially in the long run, that's an awesome thing. The false teachers got angry at Paul because of what Paul was teaching. They was working hard to obey the Jewish law. And then here come Paul coming along talking about, you are free. They didn't like that. That's why you got to really rightly divide the word of God to understand the law. You got to go, once you go through the first five books and truly understand the law, and then you look at grace and mercy. A lot of people don't even want people to be saved. And it's sad. So with that being said, y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. Till the next time, Lord, I say the same. See you when I see you. Peace.